Today's topic is weak acids and percent dissociation. Before we get to that though, let's do a little practice from a couple nights ago in case you've forgotten about it. So given a 2.0 molar solution of nitric acid, what is the pH? Pause here and work on that. Here's the solution. Nitric acid, HNO3, is a strong acid. So the H plus concentration is going to be exactly the same as the acid concentration, 2.0 molar. The pH is just the negative log of the H plus, so I put in my 2.0 molar there, and my answer is going to be negative 0.30. There's two sig figs here. I should have two decimal places there. Let's try another one. Given the pH of NaOH is 12.5, what is the NaOH concentration? Pause here, figure it out. The first thing I'm going to do is switch my pH over to pOH. Remember, they add up to 14, so pOH will be 1.5 here. And then I'm going to find my OH minus concentration by taking 10 to the negative pOH. For this problem, the OH concentration and the NaOH concentration are the same. This is a strong base. It's going to dissociate completely in water. And these two things are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I just plug this in my calculator. Remember, don't leave it in this form. And I get 0.03 molar. I have one decimal place here and only one sig fig here. Don't forget to put your units on concentration. I've noticed quite a few of you having a little trouble in that regard. Our new topic today is super easy. It's called percent dissociation. Just another way of measuring how strong an acid is. It's just how it sounds. It's the amount of acid that dissociated divided by the total amount of acid times 100 to change it into a percent. In terms of our usual icebox concentrations, that would be our H plus at equilibrium divided by our HA, our weak acid concentration that we had initially, times 100. So let's just try a problem that uses this. Given 0.10 molar HA with a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, find the pH and the percent dissociation. This is an equilibrium problem, so the first thing I want to do is write down my equilibrium balanced equation. Then I'm going to icebox it. Then I'm going to icebox it. Here's my initial amounts. I had 0.10 molar HA, and I don't have any H plus or A minus at the beginning. Then my change line, I'm going to subtract X from the left, add X to the right. And at the end, at equilibrium, I'm going to have these amounts. Then I'm going to write my Ka expression like I always do for these problems. I'm going to write it in chemicals first, and then I'm going to replace those concentrations with X terms. And there they are. I'm going to make the usual assumption that x is tiny compared to 0.1, and I'll replace this term with just 0.1, which will make my math easier. Then I solve for x. At this point, you want to go back to your icebox and make sure you know what x is. Luckily, in our problem, x is just equal to the H plus concentration, so when we want to find the pH, it's just going to be negative log of x, which is 2.87. I had two sig figs, so now I have two decimal places. Isn't this amazing? Oh, wow. The percent dissociation is just going to be that final H plus concentration divided by my original acid concentration times 100, and it'll give me 1.3%. Easy peasy. Sometimes they give you the pH and then they want you to find the Ka. So it's like you're doing the whole thing only in reverse. So for this problem, they've given us a pH of 3.21 for a one molar solution, and they want us to find Ka in the percent dissociation. I'm going to start off by trying to find my H plus concentration at equilibrium. I just used the pH to figure that out. My pH had two decimal places, so I have two sig figs here. Right away, I can write my percent dissociation. This is the amount of H plus I have at the end. Here's the amount of acid I had at the beginning. Then multiply by 100, and here's my answer. 
You guys be careful on this percent association. It's easy to multiply by 100 again because this is such a small number. You go, oh, I must have forgotten to multiply by 100. It must be 6.2%. So really use caution there. Then I'm going to icebox it. The usual icebox. This time, though, instead of setting this all equal to Ka and trying to solve for x, I already know what x is, and I'm just going to plug it in to get these equilibrium values. Then I write my Ka expression. Remember, these are all equilibrium values, and I'm going to put them in and get my Ka. You try one. Given 5 molar picachuic acid, Ka 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, find the pH and the percent association. Pause here. Here's our solution. First, we're going to write down our equilibrium equation. Then we're going to icebox it. Initial change and equilibrium. Then I'm going to write down the Ka expression in chemicals. Then I'm going to put in the X terms. Then I'm going to solve for X. And I check back up here and I go, oh yeah, X is H plus in this problem. So I can get my H plus that way. And once I have H plus, I can get my pH and my percent association. Sometimes, for some reason, people mix acids together. <laughs> Eat me. And these problems are kind of weird. A lot of times, it'll be a strong acid mixed with a weak acid, as in this case. We've got 0 0.0010 moles of HCl, 1 mole of HA, which is a weak acid, with this KA, and we're putting them in one liter water, and we want to know what the pH is. First thing I want you to notice is if we had just HCl in water, our pH would be 3. This is 10 to the negative third molar HCl in one liter. So that's 10 to the negative third H plus, so our pH is 3. Just try to remember that as we go along. This is a common ion problem. So I'm going to write down my balanced chemical reaction equation. But when I start my ice box, I don't have 0 H plus. This is our common ion. Instead, I've got 1.0 molar HA, and I've got 0 0.001 moles per liter of H plus right at the beginning because we put HCl in there and it dissociates completely. So this common ion is going to keep the equilibrium from going as far to the right as it would have if it weren't there. It's a pressure pushing the equation to the left. And then I do my change line and my equilibrium line. And this time, I don't have x and x here. I point 0.001 plus x for my H plus because I had some H plus at the beginning. And I write my Ka expression. I put in my x terms. I'm going to assume that x is much, much smaller than everything that it's added and subtracted from. And uh, we might find out this is wrong. It might be that x is too big and we can't do this. We'll just have to wait and see. So I do my math. I solve for x and I find out that it's 10 to the negative fifth, which is much smaller than 10 to the negative third. With our big figs in this problem, it's small enough. Look, a real live pika. Interesting. Careful on this problem. X is not equal to H plus. I need to go back to my ice box and look for the H plus concentration. H plus is 0 0.0010 plus X. And remember, X is really, really tiny. So it's just 0 0.0010 which means our pH is going to be 3.00, exactly the same as if we had just had plain HCl. It would be nice if we could have recognized this before we even started, but usually, yeah, you're halfway through the problem before you even think, maybe it's one of those, and you might as well just keep going. It's hard to tell ahead of time whether or not X is going to be so small that you can ignore it when you add it to the H plus from the HCl. Another really strange thing that can happen in these problems is when your strong acid gets super dilute. So let's suppose we're going to add 10 to the negative 7th mole of HCl to 100. Ooh, it should be milliliters here. <laughs> Pretend that says milliliters, please. Milliliters of H2O. 
So then to get our H plus concentration, we're just going to take our moles and divide it by our liters, and there's our H plus concentration. And to get our pH, it's going to be negative log of the H plus concentration, and it comes out to 9. 9. It's HCl, and it's got a pH of 9. Alarm bells should be going off in your head. Something is not right. The problem with this is that this concentration is so small that it's actually smaller than the H plus concentration for plain water. So when you add this HCl to plain water, it's not going to change the H plus concentration to speak of. You're taking 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter H plus from plain water and adding 10 to the negative 9 to it. It's not really going to budge. So the pH for this solution is just 7. This will happen pretty frequently. You'll get a base concentration that's acidic, or you're working with an acid and you calculate its um, pH, and it comes out basic. When that happens, check your concentrations. If it's really, really, really dilute, then the pH is just 7, and you've run into one of these problems. And that's the end.